Hey guys, Alex Sturgeon here, Hobby Town Hobby Flex. We're here on a Family Friday off-road, and uh, we're going to replace the motor on, I forgot your name. Eugene. Eugene. Oh yeah, Eugene's car. So, Eugene's motor, well, we checked it out earlier. It's uh, basically like, um, doesn't work anymore. So we got ourselves a Hobby Wing uh, 4000 kV motor. We've uh, already got 3.5 millimeter to four millimeter adapters. Uh, we went with the Hobby Wing because it was cheaper. It's $54.99, pretty good buy. Not too many steps to taking this off, but it can be a pain in the butt, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do it, okay? So first thing is we gotta get this little red uh, tabby thing out of the way. I don't know why I called it tabby. It's not a cat, but whatever. Um, so there's a screw, a single screw on the bottom. Times like this, I wish I had my drill with me, but I don't. So we're gonna get rid of this guy, make sure we don't lose that. And then we get to grab this, yank it off, okay, like that. Also not really sure why I said yank it off, but whatever. Then you got your drive shaft, we're gonna get rid of that. So this drive shaft here pulls back, this bearing you wanna pull it up like so, pulls out like eh. so. Now it's out of the way. And then for good measure, we're actually gonna pull it out on this side too. This spring just kind of goes, kind of goes in there. It's no big deal, right? Okay, so now comes the worst part of the whole thing. And that's getting this stupid thing off of here. Uh, it's a good design, but man, can it be a big pain in the butt. So you're supposed to just pull it off. And most of the time, it doesn't work as easy, so what I like to do is the hacky way of doing it. Grab a flat blade screwdriver, and kind of, once you get that past a little bit, you kind of take the screwdriver and just kind of wedge it in there and use a little bit of leverage on both sides. See that right there, okay? Both sides so it comes off evenly. And bam. Now we can pull it off, okay? So, now you're free and clear here. We're gonna unplug the old motor. Old motor and fan, so we'll set this off to the side for now. 2.5 Allen wrench, you got three screws. One, two, three, okay? So these come off like a so. And so this is your slipper assembly here. And anytime that you take this apart, it's a good idea to just uh, maybe double check these bearings. These are two 10 by 15 bearings. There's one on each side, one here and one here. If one of these is locked up and frozen, um, this thing's gonna get really hot. And I've actually seen these metal uh, plates actually uh, bend and that causes um, some binding that can actually cause your motor to overheat. So um, it's always a good idea when you have these out to just check them. Um, we actually looked at this earlier when he was upstairs in the store. Both these bearings are fine. So for now, I'm just gonna set that off to the side. Now, he does have the newer, um, the newer version of this truck. The old version had a locked um, uh, gear mesh assembly. The new one actually allows you to move the motor back and forth and change the gear ratio. So that's a, that's a good thing. Um, this little C-clip is super annoying because you can't get this pinion gear without it and you can't really pull it out of there. So we're going to actually have to get in there and get it. Um, this is like one of the worst things to do. That's why we call them Jesus clips because usually you just sit there and go, well, sorry. All right. So we need to move this guy first off. You can see how oofed that motor is. It is just toast. Oops. So this uh, this guy's a little two millimeter, and it's 
honestly not going to do us a whole lot of good to take that out other than loosen this guy maybe a little bit so we can get in there. Let's see if we can use these pliers. There's, without the proper tool for this guy, there it is, you can kind of see it. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Alright, so, stupid E-clip. E-clip comes off. Hopefully you saw how I did that. I just used the flat edge of the pliers, pressed up against it really hard, put my thumb on it, got the uh, flat blade screwdriver to catch one of the edges, and I popped that stupid E-clip off. So now we should be able to look at that. That comes right off. Excellent. So now you can take this motor off. Again, 2.5 millimeter. There's two motor screws. There we go. So now this motor is toast. We're gonna take them out of there and you can really feel, and actually look at, you can see it. That's amazing. See how offset it is? So. My guess is the bearing inside of here uh, froze up and then uh, came apart inside of there and that's why it's tilted off to the side. So probably could rebuild it, but we're just gonna we're just gonna call it good. Okay, so new motor. Should be able to just slide in there. It's kind of shorter though. Mm, okay. That's okay. So while this is dirty. If I had a brush, we'd blow that off, but uh, I'm actually doing this without my own tools. My tools are at home. I'm doing a build video for you guys. Okay, so we need to have this up. That needs to be up, so then we need to find. So basically, when you're putting this in, you want the wires to be up uh, just to make it easy um, to keep everything organized. So we're gonna find the hole that winds up with that, which is right there. Come on. We're not going to screw it in all the way yet because we've got to get the bottom one figured out and then we got to adjust our gear mesh too. So I just want to get the motor in there. Come on, Neil. Where'd you go? Hang on a second. There it is. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now, because this old motor was a five millimeter shaft, we're actually going to um, uh, be using a one eighth millimeter shaft. So I, we bought a pinion gear. And I also got him a little bit smaller pinion gear because the motor is a 4,000 kV, so it's a little bit a little bit slower. This is 3200 kV. And now we're going to put our spur gear back in there. And then we're going to put this guy back in there and just see how it lines up. Okay, very good. Take that back out. Yeah, I should have done it that way first. But that's okay. I saw where it was. Do, 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 do. Hopefully this is a 1.5 millimeter. Okay, so we got our 1.5 millimeter wrench and we're gonna start it on here first just so it's easier to get. And then we're gonna go just right down to the shaft edge, then it looks like you can really get to it from an angle, so that's what we're doing. And of course, uh, just, to, just to make it clear, the motor has a flat side, so you definitely want to have this pinion gear lined up on the flat side with the, with the Allen set screw. And this will go in there. You don't want to over tighten it because you'll break your wrench. And uh, obviously you don't want to be loose. So now, we'll put this guy back on, and we can adjust our gear mesh. Gear mesh is very, very, very important. So basically what I like to do 
is I make it go all the way together and then I'll back it off slightly and you just want a little bit of wiggle. Hopefully you can see that wiggle and you just make sure that the teeth are nice, nice and um, full in there. If it's too tight like that, then your motor gets really, really hot. If it's too loose, obviously, then you'll burn up spur gears all the time and that's no fun because you got to do this all over again for just a simple spur gear. So we'll tighten it down. Maybe. Now, I will say that I do usually like to have washers underneath of these screws, okay? Obviously, it didn't come stock that way, so I'm just showing you how to fix it from a stock configuration, but I would highly suggest getting three millimeter washers and putting them underneath here because then you can really crank down on your uh, motor screws. But for now, we're just going to do it how we found it. Okay, so you can see right there now, uh, you'll know that the gear mesh is good when A, you got that little bit of wiggle, but also that it spins freely. If it spins tight, then you've, uh, you've over, um, you've made the gear mesh too tight. You've made the pinion gear and the spur gear come together way too tight. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put this back together. So here's your cover, like so. We're going to tighten this back down. And now comes the not so fun part, and that is uh, putting everything back on. This can get kind of annoying. So basically, we're gonna... the trick is to get this lined up with that. Um, you can see those teeth in there. The easiest way to do that is to start it and hopefully just get lucky. <laughs> like that. So, super lucky. Okay, so that's back together. Now we're going to put our shaft back in like this. Again, there's teeth, teethers, and they got to match up with those teeth, teethers. Oops, get that wire out of there. Okay, and then the big end of this shaft goes on the main center drive shaft. The small end keys into that little red uh, shaft, I guess, whatever. I'm using the word shaft a lot, that's pretty fun. Uh, and then, so that goes in there, and then this bearing goes back in. Once we get that, that. See how it snaps together? It's pretty easy. They, they, they did a good job of making this very modular. And then finally that little red thing, this guy, gets pushed back in. This can be kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. But generally speaking, you should be able to just slide it in just like that. It's actually quite a bit easier after to do it the first time. Now, you may be asking yourself, hey, what about the fan? Okay, I agree. However, the cover's not going to really work with this motor. So what we're probably going to have him do, um, because I did gear him down, I don't think heat's going to be um, that much of a problem. But uh, if it is going to get hot, then what we'll do is we'll get a smaller clamp-on fan that'll fit right on it, and it shouldn't be a problem. It actually uses this size fan. It's just that this mount is probably too, uh, this is too big. It's made for the stock motor. This is a short little stubby four-pole motor. So, you know, whatever. Okay, and then finally, for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug back in by color. So, uh, where are we at? Yellow, blue, and then orange. And sometimes, when you change motors, the polarity won't be exactly be the same. And so, if, it, uh, if we turn this on and it goes backwards, then we'll just flip one of the wires. I've seen that happen before. It's not a big deal. If it does happen, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, it's not gonna cause any problems. And uh, so yeah, so that is it for now. We're gonna plug it in 
and we're going to uh, give it a go and see what happens, okay? Okay, so here we are, we're ready to go. Um, we've got his, uh, his battery plugged in. Um, we don't have to actually reset the speed controller in any way because the speed controller is the same, so there's no reason to do that. So we're gonna turn our radio on first. Always turn your radio on first. And then we're gonna turn on the car. Wheels turn. Oh man, look how quiet that is. Okay, so we're going backwards, right? That's not a huge deal. This is a sensorless motor. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna unplug our one of our yellows and let's do our orange. It doesn't really matter. It's not polarized, so it's not gonna, it doesn't really, it's matter, put it that way, it doesn't matter. So yellow, we're gonna hook up to that one. And then this one, we're gonna have that one. So there you go. So orange is now yellow, yellow is orange. We're gonna leave blue alone. We're gonna tuck these guys back down in here, like so, just so the wires don't go all over the place. And now, we're going forward. So, there you go. We're gonna go, uh, we're gonna let him put his body on and uh, get some video of Eugene's car running, all fixed up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you. Um, uh, granites are great. They're designed uh, primarily pretty easy to take apart, but if you've never done this before, it can be kind of a pain in the butt. So. Um, make sure you subscribe, like, tell your friends, check out our other how-to videos that are out there, and uh, we'll make another video for you soon. I always get him to stop because when he turned around, white truck right in the middle, Tanner's going to take the lead. I already have no power, I don't think. He's done. That's just put Tanner in the lead. He's going to put Michael in the back. Also, uh, don't forget to put that little screw in on the bottom of the chassis to hold that little red uh, tab in place. I almost.